Welcome along to a webinar presented by the Computer Information Agency. This webinar will cover the basics of SharePoint administration. My name is Robert Crane. You can contact me via an email, director at ciaops.com. If you want more information about my business, please visit www.ciaops.com. So let's get started. First of all, let's just cover a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, if you have access to Twitter, uh, feel free to use the hash CIAOps tag to put in your comments about today's session. That will allow me to view the feedback that's being provided. Uh, if you want to connect with me via Twitter, you'll find that my Twitter handle is Director CIA. Information about obtaining a resources guide will be available at the end of the session. So with that, let's kick off and start with our agenda. First thing that we'll look at is that any installation of SharePoint has a number of dependencies. These dependencies are other software such as Windows or SQL. We'll then go into the site management this basically shows you how to administer the basics of a SharePoint site from within that site. Next we'll look at the central administration website. This again is more powerful interface and allows you to do higher level administration. We'll next look at the STS ADM command which is a command prompt level tool. The advantage here is that some things that can't be done in central administration can only be done using the STS ADM command. We'll then look at database management. So one of the most critical components of any SharePoint installation is the databases in which the content for SharePoint lives. So again, part of any administration of SharePoint will require the understanding at a basic level of SQL. We'll then have a look at some security, how SharePoint handles its securities, and finally we'll end up on a conclusion. So the important thing to think about with SharePoint is that it's not simply a product that's standalone. It requires a number of other technologies for it to operate. The first of these being Windows Server. So at this stage, the current version of SharePoint being Windows SharePoint version 3 requires a Windows Server 2003 or better, so 2003 and 2008. The newer versions of SharePoint, the one that's currently in beta, SharePoint 2010, requires a 64-bit operating system only. You'll also find that you need to have the Internet Information Server or IIS configured, installed and configured on a server. This is because SharePoint is a web application, which means that it has to serve web pages. In Windows Server 2008, for example, uh, this means that the, internet, the IIS server needs to be installed as a component because it's not installed by default. So if you're running SharePoint on a Windows Server 2008, you will need to make sure that IIS and a number of its dependencies are also installed. Finally, you'll need to use SQL Server. Now, generally, SharePoint, when it is installed, if it cannot detect an existing SQL Server installation, it will install its own version. Now, there are a number of different versions of SQL Server, starting with SQL Server Embedded Edition, all the way up to SQL Enterprise Edition. All of these can be used and have different levels of functionality and limitations that you need to be aware of. But in generally in this case, what we'll examine is the most basic level SQL Server, which is installed with Windows SharePoint services, that being the embedded edition of SQL. So what we'll do now is we'll go out and have a look at some of these dependencies. So let me just go out to the example server that we'll be working on. 
So hopefully here you can see the desktop of the server that we'll be looking at today. This is actually a Windows Small Business Server 2008 machine. Uh, you'll need to appreciate that I'm running this in a virtual environment, so some of the performance may be a little poor, uh, because again, it's just a demo machine. As I spoke about, SharePoint has a number of dependencies, the first of these being Windows Server. If we have a look at services in a Windows Server, you'll notice that uh, it has already installed the Windows internal database, which is known as Microsoft HashHash SSEE. And basically what this is, this is the internal database that, Microsoft, uh, that SharePoint uses to store its content information. You'll also notice that there are a number of Windows SharePoint services that are installed and configured. So again, if you are having issues with Windows SharePoint, uh, the first thing obviously to do is to check that these services are operational. So apart from Windows Server dependency, we also have a requirement for Internet Information Server. So in this case, if we have a look at the IIS console, you'll see that there is a site that is configured called SBS SharePoint. Okay, that's its ID. And in this case, it's running on port 997 as well as port 80. So again, to get information about this, we simply right mouse click, we can manage the website, and we can have a look at the advanced settings. So in the advanced settings, you'll see what it binds to. So again, because it's an SBS box, you'll see it's binding on a secure port of 987 as well as a normal port 80. And it has a host header or known as company web. Again, you've got the physical location of where it's installed. And again, you've got connection limits and other things. So again, if you are having issues, uh, one of the dependencies, remember that it is IIS. So again, the website here, we can start, we can stop, we can delete, we can do all sorts of things here. So again, we can restart it, we can stop it. So again, something to check. What you'll also find is that not only is there a website, but there is also an application pool. So if you have a look here, you'll see that there's an SBS SharePoint app pool. Okay, so this is an application pool which is required for the functionality of IIS. So again, when working and maintaining or administrating the site, or if there are issues, you need to check, obviously, some of the dependencies. And the dependencies are obviously the services and the functionality and operation of IIS. Now, the final dependency that we talked about 